Welcome back to Weekly. Joining me now again here on Weekly is Greg Romont, the founder and chief executive officer of Centurion Asset Management. Greg, thanks for coming back and joining me on Weekly. My pleasure, thank you. So what's your assessment of the housing market in Canada at this point in time? Well, look, it's very hard to, to say that I think that there's value in buying a condominium or a house in, in the major markets, what we call the MTV, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver. Uh, some of the outlying areas uh, have some pretty good value, um, you know, but I think we're seeing a, a noted shift as, uh, you, know, you know, we've reached a point of affordability concerns, like people can't actually afford or carry the payments or qualify. And I think there's a shift now from developers to move more towards construction of rental product. Moving more towards? Construction of rental product. Right, right. So apartments as opposed to condominiums. Yes. Um, well, since you were on the show a year ago. Yes. What kind of trends have you seen, whether it's, you know, who's supplying the capital today, cap rates, other variables such as those? So capitalization rates uh, have continued to decline. Uh, rents in the major markets have skyrocketed, and they continue to skyrocket. Uh, and we're talking not just Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. We're talking, say, the top 10 cities? <sighs> so... It it's really is a story of the region. So if we talk, talk again about Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, extremely tight markets, uh, rents moving up on an, in an aggregate, you know, 10, 10 plus percent per year. If we're talking about markets like Calgary and Edmonton, Saskatchewan, rents are flat, right? So very affordable markets. So again, those MTV markets are really driving it. But the, the areas outside them, what we call the ex-urban areas, are also seeing very strong rent growth because people can't afford the course, so they're having to move out. So how does this supply demand issue in large urban markets ultimately get fixed by policymakers? I don't think policymakers will fix it. I think okay. they'll, talk, they'll do a good job about talking about it, but it actually requires very hard decisions to be made, things like uh, tax policy. Um, and you know, developers always have a perception of being, you know, greedy rich guys, and and that's a very tough thing uh, from a politician's point of view to be seen to be giving things away to the development community. The other things that could help are are things like as built or as of right um, um, building. So, uh, you know, that means if it's owned, you can go up or accelerated approvals. Um, you know, things like. It's been, it's been said in a number of locations and cities that about a quarter of the cost or to up to a third of the cost of building is actually government fees and taxes. Really? Yeah. So if you, if you could uh, find a way to let the government just reduce those, uh, and it's not just, it's not the feds, not just the province, it's also municipalities, all these levels. Uh, if they actually wanted to do it and were willing to make some of the sacrifices, we could solve this problem, but I just don't, I'm not an optimist that it'll, it'll happen. And you mentioned building costs. Mm -hmm. uh, if a third of the costs relate to government yeah. taxes, shall we say, uh, I assume building costs have been going up too over the last year. Uh, yes, absolutely. So this is one of the biggest risks for developers is obviously cost con containment. Um, you know, I saw a report just uh, yesterday that said uh, the city of Toronto needs 100,000 construction workers um, to supply the trades. And, you know, we're dramatically short. In some areas of the country where we're involved in new construction, this is the greatest challenge is finding the skilled tradespeople to be able to, to carry out the work. And if there's drywall workers available in Quebec, you're not allowed to bring them into Ontario and use them, are you? Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that, would, that would pose a lot of problems. Right. So, um, so there's interprovincial barriers that make the supply-demand imbalance in the trade side worse. It's th that's, this is very true. Uh, but it's not just a matter of interprovincial boundaries. But Canadians are, are very different than Americans, where um, Canadians tend to be born in the city, grow up there, and stay there. Um, whereas Americans, they move around dramatically, or much more, much more so than they do in Canada. And that's why in the U.S. we have 50 to 60 percent annual turnover rates in apartments, and in Toronto we're nine. 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 And does anything have to do with rent controls and driving that number? It, it, it does. Um, part of it, what's happened is the industry used to have a 25 to 35 percent annual turnover rate. That was just kind of stock, stock and trade. 
um, it's dropped off because rents have become so tight. The rental markets are so tight. There's no availability. So for if someone was to move, um, they would have, you know, their ability to get back into the, the same apartment building would be, uh, would be very, very challenging. They might not even be able to get it, but if they were, it would probably be, you know, maybe 50 to 75% more. So what, are your, what have your building costs gone up on a year-over-year -year basis, roughly? Wow, Ballpark. that's it's okay. So that really, really depends uh, on on your location. Um, you know, like I would say, in some some parts of the country, they've dropped. So we're we're okay. active in in uh, Edmonton, and we've seen costs go down. So the, the overall cost per square foot. Again, very regional story. Uh, we're buying brand new purpose built rental housing, concrete high rise, best in class, four hundred dollars a foot. And uh, we couldn't build it for that in Toronto. That land cost might be two fifty to three hundred, or two fifty to three hundred per buildable, which is four hundred percent or four hundred dollars rentable. And then you've got five hundred dollars the cost to build it, so you're all in at nine hundred to a thousand. So there, there is value across the country, but not necessarily everywhere. So what I hear you saying, certainly in the larger urban markets, an investor. Uh, won't be able to cover their cash costs of buying and owning a condominium yeah. given the rent. How does that play into the supply-demand mismatch that the large urban markets have? Is it a plus or a negative? Well, this is, these are really challenging policy questions. Um, I, I, th I think it's, it's very difficult and we're seeing in, you know, a condominiums developers in certain locations running against uh, sales walls. Right? It's not that people don't want to own, it's just they can't afford it. And uh, because the timelines are so long and the developers take a lot of financial risk, more of them are turning towards rental product. And we've got a dramatic rental shortage in the country. So I, I think that's why we're starting to see the early stages of a probably decade long plus boom in construction of new apartments. Thanks very much, Greg. Let's